can't look anywhere these days without somebody freaking out about the housing market. Now, there are lots of things that affect the housing market, but there are two major macroeconomic trends that if you don't understand, may make it seem a little crazy. Now, I'm not trying to refute the fact that houses are incredibly expensive. Wall Street Journal just put out this article, housing costs are so high that divorced couples are still living together. Or you talk to anyone in their 20s, 30s, or 40s even, and see that saving up a down payment for such expensive homes is incredibly difficult, especially while you're trying to start a family, pay off student loans, or all sorts of other things. What does concern me is this idea that the housing prices are so high and that recent high interest rates have not affected them, that they're wearing some type of a pre-disaster or some type of a 2008-like collapse that's going to wipe out the economy or your savings or some kind of doomsday scenario. So let's dive into these two major uh, drivers of the housing markets, which is really just supply and demand looked at in a very specific way. First, let's look at supply. This is from the Federal Reserve Economic Database, which is a very reliable source of information. It's the number of new home starts back from 1960. Now you can see it's very erratic, but it was, you can understand that there's a kind of an average line through here of kind of the normal number of homes we've been building. But in 2008, during the global financial crisis, from about 2007 until about 2020, we were dramatically under that average line. So for 13 years, we were producing substantially lower houses than we were, were in the past. And we've only very recently gotten back to that normal production. You want to see this in a slightly easier way to format. You can see here from 1950 to about 2000, we built about 22 million homes. But in the last 10 years, we've only built 6 million homes. That's the same numbers that we built in 1900. All right, now let's jump to demand of houses, which is really just U.S. population. Also from Fred, 1960 to present, we moved from about 180 million to current U.S. population of about 330 million. You can see as nice steady growth, so you would expect each decade we would need to build about the same number of homes. But there is a lot more information here that is going kind of unsaid unless you look at the population like this. This is a population pyramid. It shows each age group as one of these bars with youngest people on the bottom and oldest on the top. Here in 1960, you can see at the bottom that there was a very large percentage of the U.S. population that was children effectively, right? And as time moves on, here's 1980, you can see the population starting to shift higher. And by 2000, what used to be a pyramid is now starting to look like a column and the population of America is aging. And then by present day here in 2023, you can see how dramatic it has become and how much more of the population is adult. So it's not just the population was going up over that time but the percentage of the population that was adults that need homes was increasing. Similarly, life expectancy, the number of people that were born after age 80, here we are in 2023, back to 1960, is dramatically different. So it's like this triple whammy, not only is population going up, but the percentage of the population that is adults is higher and people are living longer, staying in their homes longer. So, What's the big takeaway around these big shifts in really demographics and our slowdown in building houses over the last 13 years? The first is that these are not going to change anytime soon. Fertility rates in the U.S. are unlikely to change dramatically. When you look at housing, housing starts, we're really just back to average, and the labor market is really not in a situation where we could expect to be building substantially more homes in the very near future. The second thing to understand is that when you are comparing present day America to even 20 or 30 years ago, if you are not taking this demographic shift into calculation, then you are really not comparing apples to apples. Now, the third takeaway is that these changing demographics are affecting a lot more than just the housing market. In fact, this video explains not just why demographics are changing, but how that's going to impact the economy in the future and your own investments. I would strongly recommend you watch that if you found this video interesting. I hope this has been informative. and I'll talk to you soon.